So here we have another example. Um, so here's our inequality that we're going to solve and we're going to graph uh, the solution. So you'll notice you have an x term on the left and an x term on the right. Now in the past, a lot of times we'd say, okay, um, you can put the x on the left, you know, or you can put it on the right in an equation. It doesn't matter so much. But in an, in, in an inequality, it does make a difference. So I like to always put the x on the left. You don't have to, but I strongly encourage it because um, then you can use all the rules for the graphing and, what, and the intervals and like what we've been doing. It'll all just flow better for you. Okay. Now, sometimes though, the X is on the right. We'll do that in another example. But for now, we have the choice. And so we're going to bring the X over to that side. So I'm going to subtract X from both sides. And that's going to give me negative 3X minus 4 is greater than 5. And I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Add negative 3X is greater than 9. Okay, then the bad news on my system though is Okay, sometimes you have to divide by a negative number, but that doesn't scare me. I'm going to remember x is less than negative 3. Okay, so that's the thing. If you have a negative uh, coefficient on your x term, you're going to have to divide by a negative, and you're going to have to remember to switch the inequality. But I think it's better to do it this way. Okay, if you're like, no, I really want it to be positive, I'm going to put it on the right, that's fine. You just have to rethink it a little bit when you go to graph it and stuff. All right, so here comes the graph. And so here's 0, here's negative 3, and we're saying just less than. So it'll be a parenthesis. Remember, less than, greater than, those get parentheses. But when it has the equal to part, then it's a square bracket. Okay, and we're less than negative 3, so we're off in that direction. Now, I am going to go ahead and write the interval notation. Interval notation is read from left to right. So I'm starting at negative infinity. A lot of times students will put negative infinity here and infinity here so they remember, okay, which one's which and stuff. So I'm going from negative infinity up to negative 3, and then I'm going to stop. That is the interval notation. Now in the last example, I didn't put the set builder notation, but you could if they ask or if you, know, you want. X, the set of X such that X is less than negative 3. Some people like the set builder notation because it comes right from here. But I'm just going to tell you the graphing and the interval notation, you're going to see that and sometimes they're going to say, use the interval notation and you want to be used to it. So.